are here with the Dr. John Patton and we are really, really happy that you accept to participate in our national virology meeting. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some questions for you. The first one is, uh, how did you decide to start to work with viruses? When, when did you have all this first? When did I think about this first? Uh, it was actually in an undergraduate microbiology course when I was a junior in college. <clears throat> I remember there was a lecture on bacteriophage where they were talking about T7 phage interacting with uh, a bacteria. And I thought that was amazing. It was just very exciting to learn how uh, the virus was interacting with the cell, inserting its nucleic acid into the, the bacteria and went through the replication process. Yes. And I, I was just, I thought that was amazing. I thought that was amazing. Awesome. You have been a scientist for several a years. A long time. I yeah. will not say how many, <laughs> but could you please tell us how you balance your life, I mean your personal life and the science to be this level of successful? Yeah, well, I, it's, I probably should give all the credit to my wife who makes sure I stay balanced uh, <laughs> in this mostly. But yeah, it's challenging uh, at times. I think uh, um, usually on weekends is, is the biggest challenge because I think a lot of scientists like to go in on the weekends or whatever. And so uh, there, I think there is an adjustment there to go through. but. Um, I think it's a learning process and as kids come along and so forth, you are constantly rejuggling yes. uh, how to balance work with life and make sure you're trying to enjoy the best of both. Yeah. yeah. So what will, be, what will be your advice for these new scientists to... <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, and again, that's a good question. Um, I think I've always tried to uh, mentor people that come into my lab. Um, to attempt to diversify the types of technologies they know, embrace new technologies, and just try to become as familiar with as many different techniques as possible. Uh, because you really don't know what that next job offer might look like. And the broader your base is, um, the more, I think it's the more likely you are to actually fit into someone else's uh, dream position yeah. for, a, for a young faculty or a young person. In, uh, pharmaceuticals or whatever. Now you make a, an inter you take a an interesting point is you as John Patton. What are the characteristics that you are looking for a new member in your lab? Because I'm sure um, several of our viewers maybe are interested in to go over there. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Not sure. There's any one particular phenotype uh, that <laughs> that fits into any lab. And I think obviously, uh, as people's skill sets differ or change or uh, for new people coming to lab, you try to match them up with projects that kind of maximize uh, their potential, but at the same time, uh, you try to help them if their weaknesses are, or whatever, you try to work with them on those kind of things. Uh, but I, I would say independence, motivation, uh, a desire, you, you know, uh, where you're pushing yourself, it's somewhat of an intrinsic interest in science to do experiments and so forth. I think that's the biggest part. I would say communication, writing skills are equally important. Clearly as your labs get larger, um, it becomes the onus becomes a little bit more on you, uh, more and more, to kind of advertise yourself, to, to work on writing papers and so forth, uh, obviously with your mentor's help, but it's, it's, uh, it's never a, a weakness uh, to have a great writing skills, great communication skills, and you can always practice that. Uh, as often as you can, it's always a good thing. Good. We also have a question from one of our participants, one of the students, uh -huh. want to make you a question is, if you have to change uh, something and you can go back in time, will you choose the same career? Uh, certainly. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think I've really ever seriously thought about um, ever shifting uh, into another career at all. I haven't even really thought for the last 30 years about shifting to another virus in the last 30 years. I, uh, uh, I, think, I think one of the important things when you get into science is that you have to make sure it's your passion. If it's your passion, uh, you don't really see yourself as doing anything else. And science for me is a passion and I just really enjoy it at, at multiple levels. And so, uh, Sounds good. I'll be here for a few more years, I'm good, sure. Good, good. And just to uh, finish, um, I really want to know what is your um, experience, your opinion in our 
National Virology Meeting. Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, the, the nice thing about this meeting is being able to hear the young people talk about their science. Uh, uh, and the science here, you can tell the, the mentors are doing great jobs with the young people. And there's such a nice, diverse uh, number of topics that are being covered here. I just, I just marvel at it. It's as good as any science meeting I've been to. Uh, particular in the quality of the presentations that the students are doing. So it's fantastic. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.